Okay, man. Thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to look at a flow use case on how to update related records, and particularly when the related record is a junction object like this one, opportunity contact role. So we are going to update all the contacts that belongs to this particular opportunity um, to a status of closed one or closed opportunity whenever an opportunity is closed. So just to show you, let's say I close that opportunity at it's a closed one. I want all of those contacts that's tied to this opportunity through the contact role um, as some status of closed opti. So that's what I need to do. Uh, pretty straightforward. So you can actually do all this without using Apex action and just using flow. But I'm going to show you uh, what are the implications of not using the Apex and just putting everything in the flow. It may or may not work for a scenario. So let's take a look on the flow itself. So uh, I have the flow already built out just to save some time. Uh, but let me know if you have any questions. We're going to get into the loop and assignment. Also, I have other videos particularly talking about this element. So if you're not familiar with that, please check out those videos where I go in more detail on these different elements. OK, so this opportunity uh, flow is actually a record triggered flow because we want to fire the flow on a record trigger. And the record trigger condition is that opportunity is closed true. And then we are using after update trigger because I want to fire this flow on the update of an opportunity and I want to keep it after update after the record is saved because I'm dealing with related records here. Then the next step is we want to get all the opportunity contact roles. Since the opportunity contact role is a unique object, it's a junction between opportunity and contact. And opportunity contact role itself only will have the contact IDs and opportunity ID and role. It won't have the contact record itself. So you won't be able to access the contact fields and update it directly from this uh, lookup. So first we get all the opportunity contact role. So it's basically just a simple get records where opportunity ID is record ID. And we're storing all the records because we need all of them to make the updates. And automatically storing all fields. The next step is we want to get to those contact IDs. So then we can use that contact ID to query for the contact itself so we can update that contact. So first step here is, and if, if I wasn't using an Apex action, this is what I would do. I'm just going to remove this one. So to show you an example of what I would do if I wasn't using that. So we have a loop of opportunity contact role. Then we can just loop through that and here we are looping through the get opportunity contact first item to last item and then what I would just do is update my contacts right inside that loop so to do that you can just have a cont uh, update element and we just pick the last option because we want to specify the conditions and individually set the fields so here we can say object contact ID equals current item. So whenever you use a loop, it will automatically create a loop record variable for you. So if your loop was looping over opportunity contact role, it will create a single record variable for that same looping collection variable. So if you're looping through opportunity contact role, I will have a loop of type opportunity contact role single record variable. So this is opportunity contact role right here. And then we need to say contact ID because that's what that's what will give me that particular contact. And then it's going to find that contact, set the status to closed or closed opti. So this is a very valid way to do this. So you can just connect it right here and then um, reconnect it back to the loop. So basically what happens here is, let's say you have 10 contact roles you will loop through that 10 times. So each time it's looping, it will go inside the loop, get that contact, update the contact. Then it will come out of the loop. I mean, get another contact, get inside, update the contact, and so on. So this loop will continue for 10 times, and you'll have 10 updates to your database. So let's say if the contacts was over 150, so if you had over 150 opportunity contact roles, you might run into uh, DML uh, limits because you can't have more than 150 DML transactions, 150 DML per transaction. So that's really bad. And it's 
very frowned upon to put updates or get records inside a loop. This could work if you have if you are very sure that you'll have really really low opportunity contact roles and you really won't have that situation ever um, then you can just do this way. But if we want to make it uh, scalable and following best practices we want to avoid doing that and um, in that case what we need is we need the contact IDs so that we can query outside of the loop. So for that we are using an assignment here. So the assignment is really first of all it's creating we are creating a text collection. So the reason we are using a text collection is because we need to collect those contact IDs. So it's a variable of list con IDs. Data type will be text and then allow multiple collection. This will have this is just an empty collection we will create to then I'm just going to use my own list contact IDs add because we're adding so now we're putting items into that empty collection and then getting the contact IDs by using loop through op contact that's the opportunity contact role record variable dot contact ID so we can get all the contact IDs so basically what this loop is doing is getting inside the loop grabbing each contact ID and putting into that empty collection so at the end of this we will have a opportunity uh, will have a contact ID collection so once we have all that um, next step is to actually query those contact this is where we need apex because the get records by itself won't allow you to do anything like that so let's say if I wanted to get all the contacts using some ID it will let you only pass individual IDs, but you can pass a list here, which is the problem, which is why we're using Apex for this. So um, just really quickly, getting, we are not going to look into so much code, but basically you can create a Apex method with invocable method. Um, and this is in the documentation. Uh, I actually took help from uh, unofficial salesforce.com. I highly recommend their website. They have so many cool packages and extensions that will help your help to make your flow really really powerful and if you don't want to code yourself you can just install those packages they come with test classes and everything so you can install it and use it right off the bat uh, I did have to make some updates to this one uh, because it didn't work for my scenario so uh, just really quickly showing you here uh, we're getting the request list and that will actually help me get the collection get the inputs that I need to then query so here I'm just forming a query string if you're a little bit familiar with the code, um, it just looks select. Imagine here whatever fields you want. So ID status, for example, from object name, in my case is contact. So this is actually dynamic, so it doesn't have to be contact. Once you write this, you can use it for any objects. Where bind field in this case is ID because I want to query on ID in dash. So that's my con containing collection. So this is how it will look like. Select ID from contact where ID in something. So this is where the collection list will come in. And we'll look at the debug, which will make a lot more sense. Um, so after the loop is completed, we are getting the collection. So just to call how to call that apex action, you'll pull the apex action element and then type, go to apex action. And here you'll find all your um, Apex actions that's in your org, whether installed or created by yourself. So uh, I'm going to pick this one. That's my class name. And this is where you can actually pass contact. So it takes an object and containing collection. These are all the uh, inputs or variables that I had defined in this uh, Apex return fields object name bind field containing collection so these are all what I'm defining and that's what appears over here so containing collection in this case is the list of contact IDs because that's the collection object name you can just type it here it's not dynamic so you'll actually have to type in the right object name bind field if you don't pass anything it's gonna default to ID so I'm gonna let that happen return fields is important because Unless you pass this, you won't get all the fields. So you'll only get ID by default. Then I also need the status because I want to update the status. And that's pretty much 
all. And what this will do is it will create a collection of contacts for you. You can refer that later. So once we have that, now that you have the collection of contacts, you can proceed normally. So if you have used loop before, you can just loop through those contacts. So basically all we're doing here is get contact by IDs is the action name and dot found records is where it stored the contact records. So then when passing first item to last item, so now we are inside the loop and what we need to do inside the loop is assign the value individually. So I'm first assigning the contact variable. So I'm just picking the current loop. This is literally the current loop for contact and dot status. So if I just, so this is a contact, this is opportunity contact. That's from the previous one. We need this one dot status equals you can hard code this value or if this was a pick list that pick list would appear here and then um, once we have the individual collection once we have the individual record we want to fill that up in a collection because then we will update everything at once instead of making one at a time so we're just again we'll create an empty collection of contacts that's the list contact and then we are just assigning that loop. So we're adding everything from that loop. Everything from that looping variable, basically. So current item from loop. And you can remove this dot because we are interested in the record itself. And then close the loop. And after the last item, then we just do a very simple update. So we'll pick this, use the IDs and all the field values from a record or record collection. And then you just use your record collection right here. Okay, so that should be essentially how you can scale your flow by using Apex Action, making it super powerful. Um, let's take, take a look at debug. So this is also a new feature in flow where you can debug it, a record trigger flow. Uh, you can skip the start condition. So if your opportunity didn't meet the criteria, it will still fire and it will not update anything in your actual org because it says run flow in rollback mode. So your actual opportunities are not going to be updated. So we'll hit run just to show you here. So let's see how this started. The condition was skipped uh, for the debug run, which is fine. Then initially, first of all, it will get the query, so successfully found records. Then the next step is looping through the opportunity contact role. I knew that the, that opportunity had two contact roles, so those two are here. And then next step is actually getting, assigning the contact IDs into this variable. So first time it enters, it will only have one ID. So 003, that's the first ID. It adds that to list of contact IDs uh, text collection. And then it goes through second time and then it will add another one. Then when it finds no more opportunity contact role, it will exit out of that loop now that we have two, um, two items in that collection. So iteration one and iteration zero. It always starts with zero. And then we get into assignment. So we already did the assignment here. So that's where we assigned all those into the list of contact IDs. Then the loop is ending. The next step is Apex. So this is where containing collection is list of contact IDs, which was the con IDs we created. Object name is contact and ID and status is the uh, return fields. And then we are looping through that contacts, which is same thing we are doing again. Current iteration item is that contact ID. And then we're assigning the variable. So we're saying loop through contacts dot status equal to close opti. And same thing, basically, uh, it's reading through that two times because we have two contacts for two IDs. And if, uh, at last, we'll get to this piece of all the collection record got assigned to that collection. All the records got assigned to that collection. And then at the end, we are just updating one particular. So this is only one statement. So we reduced from two DML statements that we have to make if you do it inside the flow loop to one. So this is just one statement. We're just updating status equal to closed opti and so on. 
And since it is rolled back, it didn't actually update anything in my org. So hopefully that was helpful looking at the debug as well. Uh, this is really your best friend when you're building flows. Um, highly recommend playing around with debug as well. That is all for today. Let me know uh, if you found this helpful or if you have any questions uh, about the code or I can share the code. And I also highly recommend checking out this website where they have tons of other super cool um, components that is available to use and install in your org. Thank you so much for watching.